No. You know who it is. We here. DMCA strikes and whatnot. We not worried though. But to be honest, we should be. You know what I'm saying? Like niggas be niggas be striking shit. You know what I'm saying? That's not cool. But you know, salute salute to these artists out here. We are back with the man. That's a super ass DMCA. Here we go. But we are back once again. Damn, son. Why are my air horns so low? It's so weird. Hold on, let me fix that. Oh, Jesus. See, mixing is a bitch, man. That shit just made me so much louder. Jesus Christ. All right. Fuck it. Honestly, you know, I mean, mixing is a bitch, man. That's all I got to say. Uh, welcome back to the Rambling Rogue Show. I am your host, Rambling Rogue, aka Jairus Rogue, and I'm having issues with the mixing of my podcast. But I'm here. It's another Saturday, as we do these pods on Saturday. I'm I'm once again joined by my bro host, co-host with the mo host, and Debbie. Hello, hello. What's going on, people? We back. And we here in the DJ hours, you know what I'm saying? Late in the night. It's about to hit Sunday. And we, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. We here. We back for you guys and your entertainment. Here to ramble. Are these really the DJ hours? Is that is that what this is? Yeah, 11.50. 11.50. Yeah. It's about DJ hours, you know what I'm saying? This, this, is, this is the right time for this pod, though. What gets done during DJ hours? What does a Degen dude. Just a degenerate man, you know. Just a degenerate come on to the live, talk some just nonsense. Then we gotta, you know, school him. Mm. Yeah. Now you're not wrong, man. This is the freaks do come out at night. I mean that's that's actually a mm-hmm. thing. So we you know, be be aware of the freaks. Be aware of the freaks. They are real. They are here. Nigel, how are you today? Uh, you know the freaks do come out at night, but I appreciate you for coming here too as well, sir. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Salute to you. Yeah, I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. Uh, I'm a little gassy right now. I ate mm. a, I ate a little bit of Chipotle earlier, mm. and I'm feeling a little like bubbly in my stomach. You need some more water. I don't know if it's the water. I don't know. I feel like I'm. I I may have a little bit of. Uh, Diarrhea or something, you know what I'm saying? Like, okay, that's fresh. A little diarrhea, yeah, a little, but little little stream dookie, yeah. But we'll we'll see how it goes when I get to the toilet. But yeah, right now my stomach a little rumbling right now, so I'm trying to tough it through for the podcast. You know what I mean? That's pretty sick, fool. Nah, you know it's just the natural thing in the human body. I think it, it was is. the corn from the from the from the Chipotle burrito. That that corn will kill you. That starch. Sheesh. Well, pray for Nigel's gut biome. You know, you guys pray for Nigel's gut. Not N W, aka Nigel. He's you know, he's he's going through it right now. If you need more water, just let me know, man. I mean I got I got you with the water, dog. We got water, man. I'm secured. I'm good. Even though it's almost ran out. I'm all good. I, I think this is all I need. You know what I'm saying? It's it's gonna it's gonna settle my stomach right. Hopefully, okay. well, you know, I, I I do hope so. I mean, it's you know, I'm I'm worried about you, brother. You know, I don't want you to, as they say, uh, you know, crash out. Yeah, no burning out for me. I'm all good. You know what I'm saying? I I could definitely uh truck it through. You, you no suck, worries. Suck dick, truck fit. Remember that was the line. Yeah, Remember? Little Wing got to scrub that line from his uh discography. <laughs> that shit was awful. Why you gotta scrub the line? How? Why is I suck dick truck fit awful? That was one of his weakest bars. It's just weak because it's Wayne, man. You know what I'm saying? All the all the like remember quotables he's been dropping over the years, and then he drops. I no, tr- I suck dick. No truck fit. 
I, you know, the way it comes off in my brain is I suck dick, truck fit. Yeah. Is that is that a line that you think uh, is, is like a worthy like Wayne line? Like that's a, that's a line that you gonna like sing out if you heard it. Um, that is a line that I will never forget truck fit for because of the wrong reasons. I mean, you never want to have your your brand re- being remembered with fellatio. That's not. I mean, unless your brand is like no jumper or something, where you you know what I'm saying you get on there. And you start, you start, you know, blowing bimbos in the pussy hole. But you know, I mean, unless you're doing that, that's, I mean, that's the only place I can see. The the you know, I I suck dick truck fit. But you know, would you ever want to do something like no jumper? Like, what if we had a porn conglomerate one day? Like, what if we literally? Nigel, we're able to get you in a room with some whores, some whores in this house. You know what I'm saying? Some whores, hey, whores, hey. You know what, I'm saying? What, what, what would you, what would you do? Like, would you be down for that? Like, that'd be kind of fun. Yeah, that, that that'd be that'd be pretty cool. I'd be lit for that, but I don't know if I could uh survive. You know what I'm saying? Can, can I last that long? Could, could I even like? I feel like I would tap out. You know, as as the normal man, as the normal dude, I, I you feel, a, you feel I, like you'd be a minute man. Not even that. It's just like you feel like you'd be a minute man in the porn shoot. Come on, I mean, yeah, you, know, you, you, you give may it a go good, limp. You give it a good twenty strokes. No, you give but, it a good twenty strokes, and you're <laughs> out of there. But you gotta think about it. A porn shoot, right? Like it's still a it's still a shoot. So they they trying to get you in these specific angles and shit. So then you gotta stay hard. Like, yeah, you know they're gonna they're gonna get your black ass cheeks clapping. But no, no, no. no but think like that it. angle of just ass and and her ass, but and dong, but like asshole. But you gotta stay. But you gotta think about it. You gotta stay hard that whole time, because like you know they gotta get the angles right. Well, you gotta fuck too. Yeah, but but you gotta stay hard. Like you yeah, know, what I mean, you know, what I'm saying? listen, man, listen. When you, when you, I know what you mean by the angles, but you know we got to shoot. We got a nice camcorder that keeps everything in focus. You know what I'm saying? They got the camcorders that you don't even need to focus. There's no oh wait wait a second let me adjust it. Nah, but there are the, pictures though that they've got to take, and you know what I'm saying they they gonna take your pictures while while the cam is recording too. But I mean, but I don't know. Like in a porn shoot. It's like you really got to think about like it's a porn shoot, right? Like, you know but I mean? but why does it have to be like a top notch, top rated porn shoot? Like, you know, people are just doing OnlyFans and getting out here just literally with one camera filming the action, and that we're getting right out of there. I mean, it's really not a, it's not much of a much. There's no takes. It's just kind of one take. Yeah, I mean, you have to deal with the fact well, that well, you, you just said a porn conglomerate. Yeah, you we had a porn. That, yeah, that's, that's what it is. You yeah. go shoot porn, like you get. You have know. you ever seen any of Adam Twenty Two's porn? Uh, I, yeah, I think I seen one. I seen one video, and it was actually like a like a shoot. Like it was like ding ding ding. Like you know what I'm saying? Like it's it was, on it's a set. whole shoot. It's a, it, that's what I'm saying. It's a set. Like it's a like you go there, and they tell you like you know what I'm saying. You gotta kind of I don't know I don't know how it exactly goes, but I'm sure you have to get hard on command. Yeah, of course, because you have to fuck a chick, man. But my thing is, while it's on a set, it's not... I mean, if you really watch it, it's really not angled out, and it's got all these angles. It's really just one dude with a camera who's kind of just getting the action. And then at one point, maybe the uh, the the star, the stud, the dude... Is that, is that what you can call? Is can you can I, Is that a pause if I call a male porn star a stud? I mean, yeah. Let me know, let me know in the it's, comments. It's a pause, but you know, I think you're fine, bro. But the point is, dude. You know, I mean, when it's time for the you know the money shot, you know, what I'm saying he's he's ready to you know let his kids free onto her, you know, face or or in, into her, you know, next to her uvula, you know, and when it's time for the money shot. Maybe they'll just pick up a phone, and just film the money shot. You and you want to film the money shot? No, I'm I'm not saying that. I'm just saying like, like I don't I don't know. I just feel like there's there's like a lot of uh, 
of stuff behind the scenes that you don't know with these porn shoots, right? Oh, you feel you feel like you would get AIDS on the porn shoot? No, you feel like you would get some little bit of AIDS. Nah, man, little I, bit of AIDS. I ain't scared of AIDS. I think I you think should be everyone. Of AIDS. I think everyone should be fine if we're on this porn shoot. If it's a shoot, then it should be a professional enough that we all, you know, at least gave out that we didn't. You know, a test was done beforehand. Adam Twenty Two just came out talking about he just got gonorrhea from that shit. What do you make of that? Well, I got to look at I got to look at Adam 22 for not doing his due diligence. That's a fact. You didn't I mean, do your due diligence. What are, what are, what are, what are the five five uh, uh proper preparation pre- uh, prevents poor performance. Say it say it again with me. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Say it again with me. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. He did not properly prepare and thus got a poor performance. I mean, you got to think about it. It's a job. So, yeah. Yeah, man, you got to, you got to, you know, do your due diligence, make sure you do your research, make sure everyone is straight before you do anything that, I mean, especially with your body, right? So, yeah, man, you got to treat it as if you're like you get, you about to get into a fight. No, you're not wrong. Your body is your temple. So you're saying you would treat your body too much like a temple to even be, to dare even enter your toe into any porn. I, I respect that. I'm not saying I wouldn't do it, but I'm I respect just, that. I'm though. saying there's just a lot more layers to it than than what meets the eye. Of course, if, if it's like a you know saying like a if we're doing like professional porn, that I you know you you can do some scuff. But amateur dude, it's shit not scuffed too. when you just have a couple phones though. It's and amateur just, and like a nice camera. That that's amateur. I okay, fine. That's what I'm saying though. You I, label it amateur, but honestly, like I mean, if you just get a nice, well lit room. And two people, a bed, a DSLR, but that and ain't a, a road camera. But that's yeah, not then a it's, professional. Bro, look at professional porn. Like when you look at Brazzers, you look at Bang Bros. That ain't. But I'm that not, ain't Bang Bros. That ain't Brazzers. I'm often not just on Bang Bros or Bra- Brazzers. In fact, I'm usually on Xvideos.com, and on Xvideos.com, I'm usually just finding if you mostly the, the most like you know like salacious, you know hot, steamy shit. You know, it's mostly that stuff that's filmed, quote unquote, amateur. But really, now so what they more so call it is just more so OnlyFans content. It's literally just a category, OnlyFans. I mean, salute to the leakers, but you, you get yourself some good content of some, from some of these OnlyFans, and, and you like it because it's like it's like these Instagram-looking girls that seem so untouchable, seem so unattainable. But hey, now you get you literally get you know you get a crack on their OnlyFans, and um, you know, salute salute to the sites, man. Yeah, man. Salute, salute to to the Reddit leakers and all that. You know, they 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 doing their thing. They they all over the OnlyFans. They all leaking their shit. It's I mean, it, it's really a wonderful time to live when you know women can be getting money off of this because there are, I guess you can call them what you want to call them. They are what they are. I mean, it is what it is. Sims. You know, you can call them. Uh, you know. Just whatever. I I mean, I guess down bad individuals, but salute, salute to the real ones that's out here cracking it for the real ones. Getting it for free, free 99. It's the only price I'm willing to pay. First and born. Psych? No, I've actually paid for porn. I've paid for porn on many instances. Paid porn is good. It's, you know, it's really good quality. You know, to Nigel's point, you know, when you look at that kind of porn, Bang Bros, Brazzers, you get some fire quality. You get a quick nut every time because, like, most of the videos are just made. Like, there are many parts of them now too. Like, these, you know, what I've what I what I appreciate most about the porn industry today is like, you know, a lot of weird motherfuckers is into seeing a chick rim, and I mean just get in there, just get that tongue in that asshole, just just rim it, just rim it. A lot of what do you are you into that? Well, you know, I mean, there's a little bit of that humiliation aspect. Yeah, a little bit. Wait, okay. So you're telling me that you're into watching a porn video of a girl licking a guy's asshole? A little bit. Now, that's that. That is raunchy. 
That, that is raw? real raunchy shit right there. Is that, is, I ain't gonna lie. I did, I did not expect that that fetish to come out, but all right. It's not a fetish. Do, do, it's do not tell, a fetish. It's tell, not a fetish. It's not a fetish. Well, it's just, you know, I mean, a little bit of that humiliation, a little bit of that get in there, bitch. Like, you know what I'm saying? A little bit of that. A little bit of that. It's not, it's, you know, just get dirty a little bit. Get, get a little, you know, it just shows a little, it just shows dedication to the cause. It shows dedication to the cause of trying to pleasure your partner. I, I don't know. Something about it just kind of just is hot. You know, I don't know. I mean, and, and then also, you know, and, and then you get past that. Then they, the, the ones that really, really, you know, rim a good asshole, you know, they like to, they like to, why are you, why are you stretching and contriving there? They like to really suck, you know, some mean penis. Salute to Isaiah Rashad. You know what I'm saying? Salute to my nigga Isaiah Shaw. What, what, uh, what was the what uh, was the man? Damn it! I wish my dude Bass Bernie was in the chat right now. Oh man, this dude, he would uh, plug me. Pause with the Isaiah Rashad track, the well timed Isaiah Rashad track. But it, you know, um, there's a few of those Isaiah Rashad tracks. Now when you listen to them now. It just has a different It just has a different uh, Connotation Like I ain't gonna lie Like uh, Yeah I, I Man the song I mean okay. Listen Alright Let me just Let me just listen to this real Oh Oh I already Just even hearing the beat Just even hearing the beat I already know I already know and I'm sorry. I mean, it ain't nothing against Isaiah Rashad except man, this song like, is you hard. really, I'm you really was out here just Isaiah Rashad, man. But was he telling us something before? Let's listen. Hold on. Right here, right here, right here. Ah. <laughs> was that him? Like. It was an ad lib, bro. Was that was what we'll, we'll listen to it again though. Uh it's a fucking ad lib, uh, Relax. What, what what's the what do you what are you trying to get from? I, 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 that's an ad lib. It's you know what I'm saying? It's a little uh, he's just he's just bullshitting on the mic. Oh, uh, he's just bullshitting on on the mic. He's just blah, 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 blah. just pa- saying he just Oh no nah, do it again do it again blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you, you know what yeah what, what you see wrong? this guy what's wrong with this dude what wow that shit's a it's a it's a cool little ad lib to start a song I didn't know you uh okay you get down like that okay wow uh let, let well hey man let the freedom flow, man. You know what I'm saying? There you go. You see this guy? This guy's crazy. He, uh, he knows the, what he's doing, man. He let the freedom flow. Gotta uh, sing. Let him let it be, man. I gotta kind of sing. Oh, okay. All right. Um, just that part. <laughs> what the fuck? Listen, man. Uh, maybe he was trying to tell us something before he he ever you know the video ever came out. This being Isaiah Rashad. Maybe Isaiah Rashad was t- just trying to, you know, just subtly. <sighs> because, you know, I mean, when the video, you know, with the video, it kind of, you know, he does the same thing. And a little bit of, while, you know, I won't do the noise. That's a little <clears throat> flexible, as academics All used right, to say. Bro. Yo, man. Yeah. You know I mean, saying? we really in those grind times of the career, like of the shits. You know what I'm saying? We really out here just saying shit. That's that's the moment we're in. So, yeah, flexible, a little flexible. Yo, Isaiah Rashad, yeah. regardless of what he does in the bed and in, in his own, in, uh, you know what I'm saying? Whatever he does, he is all. He is a great and talented artist. You know what I'm saying? I respect his work. I, you know what I'm saying I'm not gonna stop listening to Isaiah Rashad Isaiah Rashad is fire And He is a great artist Shout out to TD They did They did right by him So I signed him Uh yeah I actually saw a, a tweet From I believe it was Punch I don't have this up But It was I believe Punch Who said that We're gonna continue to just 
uh, and th- I believe this was through Whack 100 that I heard this on Clubhouse. So I don't know if this was a tweet or if Punch just said this, but um, it's exactly as you said. We're going to ride by our artist. We're going to make sure that he, uh, something to the effect of gets back to work because now, you know, the the narratives are spinning and, and we need to get on top of this. So I believe that we can expect some uh, some word or some music from Isaiah Rashad coming soon. Coming. Pause. I also but, hope um, Isaiah Rashad's mental's all right because, I mean, hmm. I'm sure something hmm. like this hmm. is just kind of springing up on him and just having the world just figure all this out kind of may have, like... Well, I, I think his mental's all right when he's considering stuff like this here. You know, he's... Be tight as fuck. You know what I'm saying? I think his his partner is, you know, they they are. Be tight uh, as fuck. Yeah, so I, I, he's got the, you know, the partner's got the gorilla grip. Isaiah's all right, honestly. I think Isaiah's all right. His partner's got the gorilla grip. You know what I'm saying? The uh, pucker yeah, butt. You think you the funny. pucker you butt? Think you funny with your little? I, I'm just saying, the partner, the the the, the, the partner's got the pucker butt. This man could be really struggling going through it right now. I mean, I'm sure he he's already talked about it. He you know be going through depression and shit like that. It's How like, could you be mad when your partner has the gorilla grip? I mean, you're all right. Everybody knows that good sex is literally the key to a good day. Get laid, you bruh. Getting laid is like you you know what I'm saying. Get your rocks off. So. And Isaiah yeah, Rashad is is, is a handsome motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Let's focus right. on the positive. Let's focus on the positive. Yeah, you yeah that, yeah that, that that is focused on the positive. That's true. I, I hope that can clear his mental and you know saying he can he can get back to making great music. Be so tight as fuck. Go back, get back into the studio. Haven't heard anything from him in the, like a few months. So yeah, be I'm tight just, as fuck. Hoping Isaiah Rashad is good. See why? See why are you keep playing? What? Like, what, what are you what doing? Kind of why are you what against? What, why are you so well, against? Well, what are you doing? Like, why? What do you? What is this? Well, what kind of like little offhand joke are you trying to play here? All right, man. The dude, the dude likes men. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's what he does. Be tight as fuck. It is what it is, man. Um. Yeah. And, you know, we, we, we got to move on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. My bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. My bad, my bad. You know what? We're going to jump into it anyway, though. In other news, Grip Mac, uh, you know, he's he's in the algorithm right now. Um, we definitely are not getting any, any, any sort of pushback in the algorithm right now because I am not producing clips of this podcast as of right now. My physics homework is... Uh, you know, it's just too much. And honestly, that's an excuse. I really should be, but Crip Mac, you know, this should make for a fire clip. Uh, man, you know what, man? Um, it's been like a lot of messages, you know what I'm saying, for a lot of people. And you even told me, but we want to know, like, are you happy with what's going on? Like, with your new team, your new management? Like, Hell yeah, it's the best thing I could ever do. You know what I'm saying? And uh, a lot of people are saying this and that and shit. They just broke the haters. They don't got no money. And the internet is all about trying to uh, find something to talk about. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's, that's what it is. Now I look at it. Don't know what I'm talking. So pretty much it's like, uh, motherfuckers want to, they want to have something to talk about. Uh, you find me? Just something miserable. Just like, you know, just like they was trying to say, the the Corey and the Snouts Kyle Massey motherfucker. You see what I'm saying? See, that's cut. Like, he likes boys. That's his thing. I like big booty sitches. Uh, I didn't even know about that. Apparently, uh, Crit Mac, if you don't understand Crit Mac here, he just said that he's been compared to Kyle Massey and that according to the internet, there's apparently a link to Kyle Massey and homosexuality that I also didn't know. So Crit Mac says that, no, no, he's, uh, with the big booty sitches. Um, I like how he can pronounce the B's in big booty, but then not sitches, bitches, I mean. Also pronounced the being broke. Yeah, he did call those the people that talk on the internet broke and just wanted to start internet drama. So there's that. And uh, if you don't know, this is a video of Crip Mac inside of his 
So Crip Mac being a uh, <clears throat> flamed out L.A. hood veteran who basically, if you don't know, was on Channel 5 News, the super viral, super popular news program, news in air quotes, program that basically just goes across the country and of America, that is, and 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 apparently now the world because they're apparently going to Ukraine, those guys, but uh, which is nuts, but uh, absolutely nuts, if that's real. But but um, uh, uh da 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 da. Crip Mac found some uh, viral fame through being on Channel Five. Crip Mac along with his sidekick here, Lupe. So Lupe is this. It's it's a strange relationship between him and Crip Mac. It's a relationship not of sex, not of love, even though they look, I mean, like they could be together. I mean, she's a woman. He's a man. They're both a little portly. But no, they claim that no, it's rather just a relationship based solely on just friendship. Just um, she enjoys him. He enjoys her. She helps him out. Apparently gets some big booty stitches. And uh, as of recent, she was actually known as Crip Max manager. So this video is coming out, and while Lupe here is known as Crip Max manager, this other gentleman, who I'm not sure of his name, but I, I don't want to speak too out of turn because I'm not sure of his name, has been also touted as the other new management partner or person in Crip Max management team. A lot of comments have circled about this character, kind of being shady, kind of looking weird. Um, he's just in this video sort of and, and, and in any video he's in it's kind of pe like people's impression that he's sort of guiding Crip Mac along sort of a negative route and kind of allowing him to be um, used basically and and you know is maybe taking big portions of money from Crip Mac because I'm going to show you another video actually right here we really out here man you know this man? is also posted onto Crip Mac's really page here, and if man. you're not looking we're looking at a, a giant Mercedes car? Uh, I, that may be a Rolls Royce. I'm not even. I'm not even sure. It, yeah, okay. just because of how it's a car that me and this guy hey, look, don't know. They don't want us to be, you know, out here in Santa Monica. But hopping out of Maybachs. So we're gonna be out here. Uh, the the Crip Mac, the Crip Mac, his manager. Yeah, he's popping out of this big car. He's then riding in it. He's riding in it with a stack of money, flaunting it in the car while the car is being driven by somebody else. And, uh, damn, he puts the money up so fast. So this guy is basically saying that he's going to make Crip Mac a millionaire and that that's his goal, that's his, his ambition. And yet, what we see on Crip Max page is just, it's still a lot of that constant posting, sort of that just, um, I mean, you know, he's getting hella views. He's getting hella views. In fact, I looked at his views compared to Channel 5. He has more views in total than Channel 5. But a lot of his page is this sort of, uh, it's, it's, it is the community stuff. It's helping out the kids, helping out the community. Helping out, you know, he gives back to the homeless, he gives back to children, he'll give back to random strangers. And I think that that's a little too much. Just being out on the street, just giving money to people, I think that's, um, that always makes you a target. That always makes you even, I mean, shit. The guy has Hoover Killer on his face. So, but it makes good content for the, for the YouTube algorithm. That it does, my brother. And I mean, and I don't follow Kirk Mac for falling into that. I mean, hey man, you got you got to get it how you got to get it, and mm -hmm. if this is how he's gonna get it through making videos, going through his community, and being like an IRL YouTube per like a YouTube celebrity, then I mean, yeah, I think that's a good route for him. But uh, the the in the terms of his manager and that that dude, he may be a guy that's like helping Crip Mac behind the scenes, mm -hmm. possibly trying to get him into like. I would like to say, I don't know how, but brand well, deals. There was a clubhouse that came out wherein apparently this manager, and I don't want to put any words in his mouth because I don't even know the brother's name. So I want to be careful here and state that I believe and say apparently it seemed to have been this manager who, while Lupe was trying to coerce WAC 100, who Crip Mac had spoke, spoken out of term about, see, WAC 100 
um, and we covered this on our last pod, but WAC 100 basically uh, issued a Instagram post about how Crip Mac was in jail. He was in jail for a small stint. Basically, he had some things on him while riding a car that he should not have had on him, apparently. And or according to the uh, authorities, he was arrested, booked. And so now WAC 100 and trying to apparently search for the information on trying to get Crip Mac out of jail, getting his bail information, he posted the information about Crip Mac's paperwork. And Crip Mac had an issue with that. It, Crip Mac then said that he was going to fuck WAC 100's wife and her booty and asshole, or in her pussy and asshole, excuse me, and uh, said, fuck you, you old custer pyro. So basically, and, and again, that's Crip Mac that said that. So basically, uh, from that, then there was a clubhouse meeting in which Lupe tried to basically talk for Crip Mac, but this uh, dude shot that down and said, "No, nah, we're not. We're not doing that. We're we're still standing on what he's standing on. He said what he said, and that's just how we're gonna play it." So then, I think it was this morning actually. This morning, he releases this video here that says March 26, top of the mountain, has 20k views. And it's apparently what people needed to hear. It's like, uh, you know, some more of the, uh, you know, inspiration stuff. He's also got a girl with him inside of the the bed who he tells to stop. Uh, either she was snoring. I think she was snoring. Yeah. And she was snoring and he tells her to stop snoring. But um, he released another video next to this. He released another video next to this, Crip Mac. And in this video next to this Top of the Morning video, he actually was saying, yo, Lupe, you're out of the management team. You know, basically like not fuck Lupe, but basically he, he literally said it in the title. You're trying to look for fame. And he explained you're trying to look for fame, Lupe, such and such. Da, 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 da. Like, how could you? You got around me just trying to look for just, you know, helping your own connects and helping your own vision. And, and you're not trying to you're not trying to like do anything. Uh, you know, for me and 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 stuff like that, and that comes off of me then looking at and WAC 100 has no business in Crip Mac. I mean, number one, he's on the red team. He's on uh, Crip Mac is on the blue team, so th- they're they're opposed in that, quote unquote, naturally. But that you know, WAC 100 said, "Yo, Lupe is the only one that actually seemed to have some kind of like you know." good meaning for him because she was trying to fix up what I had for him which was a boxing fight with Blueface which honestly I don't see any other big money like that coming for for Crip Mac right now I see the YouTube money which is solid which is straight but but this stuff happens in waves right this and stuff all, happens in waves and especially that's a big wave to catch on do you fight Blueface you can just ride that wave and kind of even continue with your YouTube stuff. Like, right. I don't even, that would just help you right. grow. If anything, exponentially, that would put you on literally a platform, man, that would be crazy. And then, and just the representation of what that would be like, okay, we're from two different sets or whatever, but you know, just to get this money or paper or whatever, we'll do it. And then you would think after he does something like that, shit, you got Hoover kill on your face Any Hoovers that want to come up and do this. Man, and if you can find a way to make it to where guns don't get drawn and, and, and you could just, I mean, it, it's a dream. It's, it's, a, it's a pipe dream. It's a far off pipe dream. But you would imagine that it would be somewhat possible when you see Gucci Mane and fucking Juicy, which the only reason why that was possible was because Juicy J, or Juicy J, my, I'm, I'm speaking out of turn. Jeezy, excuse me, Jeezy. I said Juicy. Oh, that's a, that's a net. But, um. Jeezy and Gucci and you have them say but the only reason why that happened was because Jeezy is now reform Jeezy like nigga I'm not like it's not that I'm about that life anymore I mean I'm still a man at the end of the day but nigga we don't have to be carrying all this shit from like 10-15 years ago like this shit is just not it like I'm not and, and I respect that I respect that like completely like that's just evolution and growth like that's just but it's Gucci be- Mane that's so beautiful to see but Gucci Mane was on his bullshit and he was being I'm sorry he was really being mad disrespectful if if you want to call a spade a spade like the man literally said we're smoking on his dead homie like how much how much more disrespectful can he be like this is a versus my brother like can can we can we kind of 
it, it's hard to say can you just kind of get past that when you know you try to take my life so yeah it's, yeah no see you know, but that's the other part the you corner. tried to take it there was another version of events where i'm not here anymore like i'm just not here there was no verses there's no this there's no that none of that i'm not here what no i'm sorry that see it's, it, it really is justifiable on both ends and it, and it just makes you scratch your head like god damn it it's it's two good cases right next to it. it's a rock and a hard place it really is tough it really is tough because you you look at it like yeah there's the peaceful route that one took but then the other one took the other the other route and is still not taking it because nigga you sent somebody to kill me like like we're not getting over that it's not like no little like hell you call me a bit no you sent somebody to end my life like nah no fuck you forever like I get that. I get that. But then you, then you look, but see, and I don't want to take the, I don't want to tangent too much, but when looking at war, that ideal or that idea becomes, you have to put that under a mag, magnifying glass because then war would never end. I mean, war doesn't really end. It kind of just shifts from place to place and with like different means and motivation around the world. But in certain conflicts, it does. And so it only does because people literally say, Fine, you killed my brother, I killed yours. <sighs> Let's stop before we kill our sons. Like it's something like that. So but it's but back to Crip Mac and back to all this, it's like it's just another one of those stories that while I can't put my finger on it, me personally, because I'm a young person, I'm twenty three, I, I haven't been around the block as much as I, I think I have, but it just feels so it feels cliche. It feels like it's hitting all the notes of the it, the 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 turned out hood dude who makes it, gets some money, but then gets basically extorted. Not even well, well, yeah, <clears throat> basically extorted by people around them. And you know, you you know, at first start and you you at first start with this big team and this big crew and. Then it starts to dwindle, and we usually see that with a rapper fall off, but Crip Mac is trying to, it's like he's a YouTuber, motivational speaker, trying to be a rapper as well, and a lot of people in his comments are saying that his raps are good and whatnot, but honestly, I mean, they're, they're offbeat, and um, they are one-dimensional, because his voice is pretty... Uh, while his voice is super raspy, he doesn't do much with it. He kind of is on one topic and on one tone. Like fucking Custer's wives and cripping hard and shit like that. Very it's just explicit like, shit. Very explicit <clears throat> and it it just but you know, I don't want to shit on the man. I'm just saying it looks like everything's all over the place a little bit. And I keep thinking back to when on No Jumper, these guys A D and T Rel, who used to run with Tyga, uh, and and is the owner of Last Kings, um, they said, "Yeah, you made a monster out of Crip Mac. You done made a monster. You got you you started something. Would you feel bad if he got hurt?" And I I really was against what they were saying initially, but now as I see it more and more, I'm like, man, like, you know, you're shitting on the bags here and there. You're you're, you're publicly beefing. And then you're, uh, you know, you're cutting your people out publicly as well. There's a reason why those things are looked down upon in business, like in industry. But There's like, a reason. yeah, I mean, I don't know. You can look at Adam Tony too and ask him that question and to see, like, would you care if he gets harmed and whatnot? But I'm just looking at it also as that, I mean, Crip Mac has to have some kind of, like, like he's he's a man who makes his own decisions at the end of the day he has to make the like if you're gonna get into this like media like youtuber bag you gotta make proper decisions for yourself to you know grow so i want to ask you do you think that somebody who would tattoo hoover killer and a five on the side of their face do you think do you think that proper headed decisions is something that they specialize in or do you think that maybe it's something that they could lack as a skill like if making critical thinking decisions was a skill so do you think that somebody with a five on their cheek and hoover killer on their face on their forehead 
um, do you think that that person, I, I think that person honestly may struggle with um, critical thinking decisions, particularly when they also admit to constantly being intoxicated, like always drinking old, old, old English 40s and old English and whatever. And it's just like, I, I, I'm looking at it from <coughs> a top down English. perspective because why the old, because it's just what he enjoys, man. And, and, and there's a beautiful simplicity to have your beer, have your, have your food, have some good times and, there's there's that level of it that Crip Mac represents because we've all known somebody in some facet or form. I mean, when I look at Crip Mac talk about his old English is forty man, I you know I think about rest in peace, Mr. Russ. I immediately think about Mr. Russ because he was an old man that I knew coming up in my mom's shop. My mom, if you don't know, she runs an African market, the number one African market in the Inland Empire, and this was an old man who for nearly for over twenty years would just show up to this shop almost daily would talk his shit would talk his shit <laughs> and he would ha and 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 in the earlier days he would have his beer but you know because of health and whatnot he stopped having his beer but the one thing he would always talk about is how much he want his beer and even when his health started to decline he, he, he went back to the drink and it just he it's crit mac and it reminds me of the simplicity of that man the wit the wise simplicity the wise simplicity because wiseness does not come from all these words and all these things like how we usually think it does sometimes it just comes from these sources of of pure authenticity you know somebody made of the mud not come from the he made of the mud he's literally made of it you look at him you see it you smell it you hear it in his talk everything when i think mr us man hell yeah that's his gravelly everything about the man and he wasn't a crip he wasn't a gangster he wasn't a pimp none of that he just was a a, a man that a black man that came to this country in times of turmoil, dated in those times, was a player of sorts, you know, because he thought he had money. But what he really had was the new invention called the credit card in which you were able to give people money just based on nothing. And they would have to pay it for it at some later date, but they wouldn't care about that. They would just ask for more credit until they couldn't until then. Well, <laughs> well, yeah. And so, you know, I say all that to say, I say all that to say, Crip Mac just reminds me of a person that's very vulnerable. Um, he reminds me of a person that once you give him some fame or some shine, it may be too much for him. I really see that. A lot of people see that and there are signs for that. But the thing I also don't like is how people judge and how they say, well, do this and you should do that. You're not in his shoes. You don't know any of these people. You don't know him. You don't know him. Who for kill is on his face? You don't know this guy, and and the most you can do is put the best amount of people, like the the right people around him, so he can flourish. I mean, I mean, and if Adam didn't do that, I don't know what else you want, right? Like if he he put him around the podcast, like seeing just these these guys, like the um, ads, T rails, these 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 people. So he's connecting them. He's connecting himself with them, but you just got to have hope and faith in the guy that he's going to make the best decision for himself. But I mean, well, TRL is like his mortal enemy. Number one, because the dude on his, on the, the name on his face, TRL is that. So they're not sitting down together. Number one, number what two. Yes. Fuck? That's how serious it is. I mean, it's that's nigga. What the fuck? Yeah. I mean, Yeah. So that's not happening. Uh, I don't, okay, I don't. But this is could. hard not it to could, disrespect though. anyone. But it could though. But I fucking hate put hood politics, man. I hate it. It's, it's crazy. It's honestly crazy. Like what the hell? These two men could just, you know, what I'm saying, sit in the same room. Shit. Yeah, he has Hoover. Oh, I don't know. Shit. He has Hoover killer on his freaking forehead. Like. What else? It's a conflict of interest. That is so hard not to say something or be like, bro, what the fuck? Like, I don't know. Like, I mean, these are my brothers. Sort of... These are my sisters. These are my people. Yeah. This is my area. Yeah. And then the way you talk about them, it's kind of too out. Just so too. If bold. I showed, if I showed, yeah. I don't even want to show you the the video where he's dissing the dudes that T. Rell just interviewed. I mean, just talking about he'll spit in your mom's. Just disgusting, like so. And, just and, very and vulgar, just very vulgar, and also very violent. And 
you know, you look at him taking down the Lupe video where he's, you know, dissing Lupe. But if I go to his page and find it and, and find this hardcore ass cripping video where he's banging on these Hoovers over YouTube, and this is the exact shit that the rappers and say what you want about the rappers. But one thing that the more established ones be saying is don't do this. Don't exactly do this exactly. Don't be on the Internet just saying shit like just like it's it's um well it's not a recipe for for uh yeah good things to come for sure um it's not i mean yeah that's not good um banging on people on the internet like actually putting it up yourself too especially no it's not that's not the right way but uh what do you i don't know it's it's hard to say it's hard not to say what are you gonna do like he was put it on on Channel Five, and uh, you know he had he had some charisma. No jumper jumped in, and you know gave him an interview, gave gave people the 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 chance to hear his story out, and here we are with his YouTube. Like I mean, yeah, I don't know. I just, I just hope, pray that nothing happens to Crip Mac, and uh, yeah, I hope nothing happens to him either. But it but it is. Um some some of the things you see do they're like uh they're like they're like they're just red flags they're just red flags to like oh shit to a safety and if i'm i may be wrong i'm looking at this on a small only like two videos coming up at a time but it seems like he may have deleted but he does post a lot of videos i mean i've scrolled for a while and i'm only at two weeks ago i've scrolled for a while and i'm only at three weeks ago so he puts out a lot and he's getting a lot of views and attention and and all that's and and then also just when you produce content when you're always on camera always not just camera like not just literally a a, a formal dslr but even just a phone camera always putting it on yourself always performing always doing that you change you do change you feel you feel like real life is it's like it's different almost like it i think it i think being online for too long, you know, it makes you respect the XQCs and whatnot. But even XQC says he doesn't go out much and whatnot. And he explains some of his like off camera habits. Some of them, of course, he doesn't want to explain too much because, you know, then you'll literally have people showing up wherever you are. But it's like it doesn't seem so healthy, you know. I feel but like a lot of people. There's the have... fuck whack 100 video. There's the fuck whack 100 video. But um. Which is still up, but and I'm sure this other video is, is up here somewhere. But man, there's so many fucking Crip Mac videos. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I cut you off. I feel like it's a um, damn. I kind of got lost in it because I was just looking at you scrolling down. <laughs> but yeah, Crip Mac. Uh, it, he does post a lot, and, it, and the the views are looking pretty pretty consistent. So I mean that that's that's good. I I want to look at the good of Crip Mac. But it's like we said earlier, you know, it's the waves thing. Yes, these that, things move in waves, man. You you have all these views now, and then and then in the next few months, it's a thousand each, and 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 it particularly happens like that when you burn out. Like either either you keep producing at the exact same level, and people get tired of you, or maybe you stop producing because you get tired, and then of course it has the exact same effect. People get tired of you. Yeah, he he's definitely missing a bag by not like, you know, having peace talks with just whack one hundred and just trying to squash that so they can set up a boxing match with Blueface. That would be definitely good publicity for a uh, Crip Mac, and also Blueface, who is uh getting flamed by academics. Oh yeah, because of uh, his girlfriend Bluetooth. Bruh, that shit was ridiculous. <laughs> Yeah, he he, he definitely went on, in on her, but she she was she was walling though. She was walling. She 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 said some wild ass shit to academics. I ain't going front. Academics yeah. always has the receipts, so you you, you will see the side. Well, she side said, too. well, she at first, that whole thing's just started just because she apparently wanted an interview, and she, and her people were reaching out on multiple accounts even, in on multiple instances to get an interview. He finally responds. And then on a phone call, they say that, oh, no, no, no. 
Christian Rock is no longer doing paid interviews, which he felt slighted for because it's like you are nothing. Like is it, which was his point. Um, you are nothing in this game. Like you're not anything in this industry. Who do you think you are to be asking for any of that? And then he just goes off on her, just basically off of that. And Blueface also basically tweeting um, that exact story on Chris on Rock's behalf, basically stating that, "Hey man, act mad that that am I, you know just saying, act mad over, just basically act as mad." I don't know if he said because she's trying to get an interview or if he stated the fact that she's trying to ask for payment, but yeah, act act. Uh, you know he shows he's an equal opportunity smoke giver. And uh, he provides the smoke to anybody that 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 will that will oblige. Salute, salute to academics. Speaking of smoke givers, we got we got one right here, man. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do, man. Uh, good morning to everyone, except those that think talking about someone's kids is cool. Jorge Masvidal, UFC. Whose uh, profile pic is a photo of him socking the shit out of, I believe, Colby. This is not how we conduct ourselves in this house. <laughs> Usman. <laughs> what? Number two facts of the, of the day. Number one, Masvidal is a bitch for ambushing Colby. Couldn't hurt him in the cage, so try to blindside him? Question mark. Number two, UFC always since it's always says it's increased fighter pay 600% since 2005. Per huddle up, UFC revenue is up 1,700% since 05 and profits up by 6,200%. 10x fighter pay. Well, Jake Paul. Uh, what the fuck is this video? New footage of Colby Covington street fight video. The initial call to police came from one of Colby Covington's cut coaches. I've learned cops were told that Covington socked or was punched. Masvidal wearing a surgical mask and hoodie soccer punched Colby, according to few new info. Uh, Colby's Colby was hit in the mouth and eye. One of his tooth broke. Masvidal is facing felony arrest if Col- Col- uh, Covington cooperates with police and their investigation proves the UFC star's claims. And here's the video here. Oh, shit. We got a video, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my God. What is this? Uh... Yeah, I don't know what's up with that music. Yeah, we just if you're not looking it's a slow video very very grainy very quick I mean it's a very quick video but very grainy showing apparently Masvidal outside of a steakhouse or outside of a building <laughs> Nate um, Diaz tweet punches. how are you going to snitch on you <laughs> oh man like the Nate Diaz tweet like that's Nate hilarious Diaz. that's so funny cause honestly Masvidal was screwed from the beginning, but uh, yeah, Masvidal is dumb for ever posting something like, "Oh, and you know, in my hood or whatever, we, we show our face, the show face challenge." Like, why would you, why would you ever do that or admit that you just committed an assault? Like, why would you do that, bro? Like, are you are you thinking? Do you have a brain? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just you just question, Mas- Like, yes, you don't. Okay, yes. You don't talk about a man's kids, cause you you gotta and and if you do, you gotta face those consequences. Mm-hmm. But as the man, imagine it all like, if the man who's gonna do like com, like you know what I'm saying, hurt Covington, like don't don't come out on Instagram or on the internet talking about show your face like what the fuck are you bro? What are you doing? You think you think that's what got Masvidal all caught? No, he was fucked. But don't don't come on the internet just basically openly saying, "Yeah, I uh, you know, it's not it's not openly saying it, but it's basically just having it now just on record that you yeah, you you just you just 
basically soccer punch Kobe Covington and uh, just all he said. Are you talking about the tweet where he said "Good morning" to? No, not the tweet. There's a video of him saying like, "Yeah, it, like in my hood, you know, we we show our faces, show your face challenge," and then he's just showing his face. It's just like, dude, why the fuck would you? Ah, he's showing his face after the after the incident. <laughs> like, bro, that's and that's why the Nate Diaz tweet is funny. Like, why would you like? Why would you snitch on yourself? Like, nigga, keep that shit to yourself. Let let you know the cops come to you, they come to you, but don't have it now on record on the internet saying that yeah, like yeah, I'm the one. I mean, you, you're not stating it exactly, but you're basically stating it. Like you're just saying it without saying it. Like, bro, what, what's wrong with you? Like, uh, it's, it's it's just bad, man. It's just, it's a bad situation for Mads with all right now. The show your face thing kind of only works when you're dealing with niggas who won't be snitching afterwards. Like, that's kind of only work when it works. And niggas come in all races, shapes, and sizes. Like, yeah, like, like just somebody. That's, I'm just telling you. Like, or maybe just somebody that's not a a goddamn USC fighter. Like, what the fuck? Like, bro, do you think he's just, oh, oh, yeah, we fight in the cage. We're all fighting outside. The, no, nigga. This is outside the cage. We, we live in a society. This motherfucker's going to call the cops on you, bro. Or I'm not. <laughs> what What do you think this is? Like, what? Are you Are you insane? Like, literally. But. Yes. But at the same time. Game bread. You, you don't. You don't. He's talk, game you, bread. You don't talk. You don't talk about a man's Nah, game. he's He's game bread. Nah, that's that's just nutty, man. He he really had like an explosion in his brain or something, man. Cause nah, he's what he is is what he had was is that he's game bred, and then once you get a game bred animal into a corner, mentally or physically, the game bred animal shows you, and, and, and it's game bred. The worst part is he did a sucker punch, man. You nah, man, at all. You kind you lost a little bit of your rap too with that, like a sucker punch, my G. Like yeah, face the consequences. You don't get no of, points for the sucker punch. Yeah, face your consequences for what you said about his kids. But nah, I don't just sucker punch. Boy, them. you don't get cool points for the sucker punch. Nah, he he, he walked right up. He nah, he walked it right up with a hoodie, face mask. Yeah, all right. All right that's cool, oh, man. Shit. Damn, that's cool, man. You walked up with your hoodie up, with your face mask on, and then you 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 proceeded nowhere, just straight fist. All right, cool, man. Or, or if you're gonna go straight, I don't know. They, they, they literally tell you it's a sucker punch. I mean, I, I, I don't know exactly how it went. Maybe as it all did come up to him, looked him dead in his eyes. As I've heard, it's that he literally sneaks up. That he, that he puts the mask on. Maybe even puts some glasses on, some shades. See, and yeah, then walks nah, up to the nigga, side that's of dude, sneak, sleep, and then what? starts yelling. I told you not to talk about my kids. I told you. I told you. Which, which is like, yeah, while walking but, away. Nah, nah, man, nah. You, you, you a punk for that, not at all. You supposed to be the dude. You, you was the nigga that 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 saw Leon Edwards, and oh yeah, I had my fa- my you know my hands behind my back, but he you know he, he struck first, so I came at him. Like, come on, bro, what happened to that nigga? What happened to the dude who kind of stood on his shit? Like, you know, what I'm saying I don't fight no man until he he comes at me with some lethal intent. What happened to that? You know what happened? Kobe Covington ran his mouth too goddamn much and said a little bit too much. That's what happened. So, I don't know. There's two sides of it. There's always two sides of it. Like, Kobe Covington, I mean, not Kobe Covington. Imagine it all just, a screw just went loose. As soon as he talked about his kids, he was like, nah, nigga, that, nah, it's it's a fade on sight. Can I use this raw paper? Go ahead. He, he says, it's basically a fade on sight. Like, and if I can catch you, if anyone posts your location, it's done. And uh, Masvidal decided to handle his business in that way. And I to think even it's done, handle but... it the quote unquote gangster way of posting the picture of the face. Or excuse me, the video. Come on, dog. That, now that, that like, uh, if you want, if you, you, if you wasn't bitch enough by just having just the sucker punch, don't post the video as if you like. Oh yeah, we we really got a tough we we like like we got in a tussle and you know what I'm saying and yeah I'm I'm on skates or some shit like nah bro no no like you straight snuck up suck punched him broke his tooth probably gave him a black eye and walked away like what the fuck 
Oh, what are you doing, bro? But, but I, don't I don't know. At least he walked up, man. I mean, at least he he pulled up. You're out of uh, papers, by the way. But at least he pulled up, man. Hey, and I also got to look at the Nelk boys. Why why y'all posting Cousins location when you know that you know this motherfucker is hot right now in the in the city of Miami? What the hell y'all niggas doing? They like, hot. Get, I mean, shit. He just got punched and lost a tooth. That's pretty hot. Like that's pretty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He got ran up on. Yeah, okay. The Nelk boy should be looked at a little like, okay. Like, like bro, why why are you po- Y'all famous like, too. Like, Y'all know like, how we get down. Ex- like, come on, exactly. man. Exactly. Okay. It, especially because you're, fa- like, especially if you're famous, you know, like, yo, don't don't be posting locations. Don't make sure it's like, you know, low key. But no, they did none of that. They didn't give a fuck. Or maybe, maybe Covington didn't give a fuck. Maybe it was just like, yeah, I don't, maybe they, maybe the Nelk boys did ask like, yo, are you, you cool with us? Like, you know. But if they didn't, then you looking at them a little sideways, like, it's man, like, come on, man, like, come on, bro, why are you like? Because they did openly post like where they were and all that shit. So I mean, gave Nazareth all, all the keys to just like, all right, we're running up. And this all happened. Now everyone now coming at yeah, and yes, rightfully so, saying that Nazareth was a bitch for doing what he did. He couldn't get it done in the case, so. I mean, I don't know. But then you got the, like, you said what? Khabib said that, uh... Well, you know, the furthering of it is that Colby Covington now wants to press charges. It's, you know, there's an argument that goes, okay, well, if you're a fighter, particularly if somebody, you know, strikes you in public, you should just fight it out and just, that's what you should do. But Colby Covington says, no, we're not going fight to fight it out there in the street. Since you didn't want to get it in the octagon, you want to get it out here. We're pressing charges. He apparently is pressing charges, at least uh, according to a report that got to Khabib, who then commented on that report to state, nobody should fight Covington. Let this bum go broke and fuck you for basically making a good, decent man step out of his composure with your silly words and your antics and, and your antics. And now you see well, what that gets you, you you get you get you get physical consequences. Um, Which, in that sense, I can okay. That's where I can cut in and be like, all right, Nazareth does have some right in doing what he did. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's not like he he bitched out. He surrendered to the police. He did. He didn't just uh, like run or evade or anything. But uh, he accepted his consequences of his actions. But Kobe Covington, I mean. Bro, you don't 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 talk about my wife and kids. Like, what do you? What do we? What? It's a fight. Like, let's just leave it to us and what our beef is, and just keep it there. But now that he has, what if you see Colby now then talking about Masvidal's wife and the kids? Even more. Yes. What if you see that after this tooth has been healed, and you see? Do you? I mean, what do you think is going to happen? Do you think because he hasn't? Colby Covington has made no comment. About this incident so far, he has said nothing, and this is where it's at. Masvidal's arrested. I think there was a fifteen. I believe it was a fifteen thousand bond, fifteen thousand dollar bond, and uh, well, yeah. So if I was Cody, I would try to like push this over, man. Try to breeze it by, and and not focus on it. Don't like you're gonna get questions about it, but keep it light. And uh, don't just try to breeze it by and just try to go with your go move past this. But with Kobe's um, admittedly, not really admittedly, but it's so much evidence to see his persona is just that it's just a persona with his persona comes that fan hunger for the response, particularly on stage. So, you know, that the next time he's going to get it. And if they're in front of people, there's more of that pressure. I, I'm interested in seeing what Colby Covington says Bruh, next. He he talking about other people, kids. He talking about Dustin Poirier, kids. He, he don't really give a fuck who he talks about. So he may he may hit the Conor McGregor button, and just go f- full on. I don't give a damn, and uh, yeah, just kind of go buck wild with it. But I I don't know. Like you said though, Colby Covington's a persona. Like his his character in the UFC is a persona. That's not mm. necessarily. 
the full him. That's not the the actual Kobe Covington people would say. They say he's more of a nicer person, gentle stuff like that. So uh, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like he would. He will probably tweet out some 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 heinous shit just to keep the you know character alive, so he can you know I mean. He's, he's just to keep his draw. At that point, you know, you really do have to look at the man, though, and say, well, you can't, you're not living two lives. You may call yourself two different names, Melly and Melvin, but nigga, you're one person. You're one person that did one set of things, and we know you for one set of things. And even if you make that switch to publicly state that, you know, a lot of people do then have the right to look at you as a piece of shit. Because Jesus Christ, man, I mean, there's there's a good incentive for you to continue it. I can give you that. But now somebody's going and getting jail time. There have been real life consequences. Real life consequences that, according to his anger, and this is no story. This is no UFC created nonsense. None of that. This is the dude literally ran up and sleeped him and is even facing a felony. So, which means jail, which means possibly, very likely, he could go see some prison time. And if Moss would all see his prison time, I don't see a UFC fighter just kind of throwing it away and letting bygones be got. Excuse me, bygones. See, I mean, it's slightly related, kind of, kind of unrelated, but Cain Velasquez, not touching. I mean, Colby Covington didn't touch no kids, but it hits the same button when you when you get a man in that. And when you get a man, it hits the same button when you talk about a man's one foremost job in being a protector and you and you even and more so when you shit on it whether you shit on it physically then we really got to take it to that extreme of i'm ramming a car on you i mean it just seemed yeah but the point i'm trying to make is mosford all sees prison time this maybe is not even the end of this he comes out maybe says fuck it talked about my kids i don't give a fuck what they say i don't care we going back. We doing this shit. I guess I'm going to jail tonight. Nah, I don't see. And if it's not, and if it's not Masvidal, and if it's not Masvidal, we all got money. So now I got money, and I got to worry put money up so that, because I got to worry about other people putting money on me. That's a fact. Because if it's Miami, come on, dog. We all got guns too. So come on, dog. Like, what are we talking about? Nah, oh, okay. okay, okay. I don't see. I don't think it's that. Okay. I don't think okay. it's that deep. I don't think okay. it's that deep. I think Masvidal okay. got his in, and he's. He's he, he's satisfied with what he got. Let Kobe Covington keep talking, though, persona or not. I think if Kobe keeps on talking, he's gonna talk about now just Masvidal more. He's he's gonna he's gonna probably start. I would hope start leaving the kids out of the the equation. May just start calling you know the yeah this bum you know I had I had to press charges on him whatever, you know say talk his little shit. And I can see Kobe Covington coming out saying that. Likely answer, I see that as well. But you know, you, if and I think that was a key thing you said there, the Conor McGregor button, the nigga just hit stuck. Boop, fuck see, it. See, that's another. That's another gear though. That, it is. That's just saying like, I'm gonna continue saying fuck the kids and all this stuff. That's yep. that. But yep. I don't think I, I. I have strong belief and hope that Kobe Covington is smarter than that. And is not re- really risking to be the brand risk in doing that because brand. I mean, Conor McGregor is he's, he's a million. Mm, he's half mm. a billion dollars. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's like it's different for him. He's bi- but it's different for him because hmm. And, and because, it's kind of different for him because okay, he was like okay, he had the star. He had the. He had the t- shit talking, but he also had the stardom. Like he was the star. Like he had the two chip, two championships. Mm-hmm. So that's what built the ego. Not coming off of a loss, two losses from the champion like Colby. And yes, that builds the ego, builds the brand as well. And I think, I think in context, when Connor's talking all of this shit, even now after having the losses because of his history, is still able to talk that shit. You know what I'm saying? But right. but then when you look at Colby, it's like I think what you said is so key because you could then go out and talk all that shit, but are you Connor? You hit the Connor button, but are you Connor? I mean, to be Connor is not just be Connor in the aggression in the in the well. I have to make a persona arena. It's the, also the 
man, I got to make some money. I got to make some real, real, real deal money out here and shit on these motherfuckers in a, in a level where they can't even touch me on this level. Like, and I think really hitting the Connor button is more so an entire lifestyle. Like if you if you go up on that podium and do it, you better be sure that you're ready for that entire lifestyle, and also you better be ready that to have the funds, because Nigel, you you downplay the you downplay the possibility of of a hit being trying to take out on um on Colby Covington. I I see it as is totally totally in the cards, totally. I mean, this guy Mosfet I was talking about, he's he's connected, he's out here, he, he's you know what I'm saying, he's street Judas. You know what I'm saying? In my hood, we do this. Man, that's exactly what they also do on their hood. When you disrespect me to, to a point where now I'm violated, 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 as in as in violating the law, as in out here. And then particularly, you snitching, and it's just like. But uh, no, I, I don't think Maxwell's going to do that because he, he, okay, he got he got his lick in, so he got mm-hmm. his just dues. And he also surrendered to the police. It's not like he, he yeah he didn't but evade the to, police. He, that's he true. But to not to not circle around this too much more, it's just um, yeah. If Colby go uh, hits that Connor button, and I don't think he's ready for that full lifestyle. If he does, I really do think that that's totally in the cards at that point. You think so? Yeah, I, I mean, that's a, <laughs> like if he just hits the Connor button, I think it becomes much danger, much more dangerous to be Colby Covington. The tweets, the the we're way out of this fight. This fight's not even gonna happen anymore. Maybe I'm even in another division at this point. Fuck you, still. I'm I'm okay. okay Fuck yeah. you. Like I, I can still the see the Dagestani's. Oh, I, that nigga gets racist behind closed doors. You know that. You know that. You know. You know for a fact. Connor Rich ass be getting hella racist behind closed doors. But don't be doing that shit because this nigga got a again five hundred million dollars, half a billy to his name. You know what I'm saying? Big businessman, but but he gets it off how he could get it off the Dagestanis. That disdain that he has when he says that shit. Like, nah. That shit I'm sorry. That shit is such like end level boss, like 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 I'm sorry. Yeah, the dude the dude really does have a straight disdain for those 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 people, man. He really does, man. It's real. Off of losing a fight though. And even before that he was talking mad shit, breaking their like Window bus, later like their bus after before they're leaving and shit, just doing wild man shit. Like that was some real WWE kind of promotion, like levels. But see, it it becomes it becomes a level where we don't talk about this much, but it's a little dangerous to be Conor McGregor because again, you know these guys have cousins, these guys have family members, these guys have, these guys have fans, these guys have fans, fans. A fan will go out here and finish your ass. You thought it was all sweet, taking pictures. Boom, boom, boom. He hits you with that knife, with that six inch, right in your chest. Fuck you. I mean, forever. The eagle. You crazy. You uh, think you crazy. Uh, well, now you laying on the floor in the pool, but it's crazy. Well, oh, I, ho- I, ho- I hope that oh, does not shit. happen for no. I hope no one gets uh, harmed in these situations. But it, it, as it, as it, we should it, say, it, but the point the, I'm trying to make is is it is dangerous to be Conor McGregor a little bit. That is why you do see him with the security guards all the time. Yeah, it's a fact. Like, and not just because of the rich. It's because nigga, I talk that shit. Like, I really be out here talking that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yay. I really be out here talking that shit. I went out here on my album talking about fuck you and your Hampton house. I fuck your Hampton spouse. What? Maybe that's not the same like vocal. Maybe maybe you're not making a connection of, but I'm just saying you make when you make enemies out here, don't diss the wrong person. And then when you do, if you do, you better make sure you put your fort up and be ready. Don't and be ready for anything at any time. I mean, you see these kids out here. We covered it last pod, pissing on Wack 100's freaking lawn, and I haven't heard anything else about these dudes. You go viral for the second, and shit, no, nobody cares about next week except for that person that you offended. Oh, he's he, he's glad it's out of the out of the news. Oh, he could just focus on it now without. Ah, oh. it's like what? It, it's just so dumb. Like the whole the whole clout sort of just era. But hey, man, there's some people having fun in the clout. You know, we we saw him. We saw him. Th- this 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 has been up on the screen for a while, but we saw him throw his head his his hat up triumphantly, and he's back out on these streets 
And actually, there was another message posted by dude where he, he stated some stuff. I'll actually get it here, but uh. Yeah, we, we all know this. It's going to be mad hard when it comes out. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I'm waiting for this this uh, Bobby Shmurda new shit. Bobby you know Shmurda in the in the studio with a couple of, you know what I'm saying? Nice little highness, man. Little, I mean, I don't I don't want to be disrespectful in calling them highness, but, you know, a nice couple of little, little hotties, little couple of little skin, you know what I'm saying? Little, little pretty young things, man. I like that, man. Salute to Bobby Schmurda, man. We got we to gotta Bobby. give Bobby Schmurda some some claps. It's a fact. Not even some quiet claps. Turn my claps up, man. Yeah, man. We we were we were we were you know we were kicking this dude's back in a little bit. He was out here doing some some questionable things, to say the least. It was but, his uh, body, man. You know what I'm saying? And and a lot of people do like the dancing. Uh, I saw him and the Kai Shinat, Shinat, you know, um, they, 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 they tapped in, they, they did a little, like, little skit, you know what I'm saying, they was, they was dancing, and Kai the, Shinat and his freestyle, and his freestyle, yeah, man, you know, they was dancing, Bobby, Bobby Smurda was the coordinator, you know what I'm saying, he was showing them how to get down, and, uh, yeah, you know, Bobby Smurda getting his little bag, you know, showing the kids nowadays how to dance properly, there you go, you know, yeah, and you know you had Roddy Roddy Rebel in the background there. You know, Bobby seems back on his shit. It it, it just he seems he seems yeah that's that's really that's really all I could describe. He puts out another message here. He says, "What is this? I just signed my release. I just signed my, I just signed my release papers. Also, just made a whole milli today." Can't wait to drop. Shout out to my nigga True Life. Ah ha 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 ha. My nigga, I'm shooting my first independence video today. Called getting them back. We celebrating all week in. Yeah, man. You know, the round of applause for uh I was gonna say Roddy Rich. The round of applause for Bobby Schmurda, man. It's, it, you gotta give it to him. You gotta give him his flowers. He's uh he's out of his deal with Epic Records. So it's looking like he's uh, flourishing, and he's throwing money in the in the club, throwing money a little differently. He had a uh, yeah, had the people you know hold him up. Yeah, the people hold him up, and you know some some honey's just trying to get a little little, little taste or whatever. Roddy Rebel is man holding his leg, you know, his man, and just uh, you know, baseball on that shit. Yeah, having fun. Did he just twerk in bro's hand? There's a bottle involved here. This is kind of a nasty video when you actually dissect it. The man that's holding the bottle, that's also holding up Bobby by by literally the ass. First comment says, bro, pause. But listen, man, Bobby is out here doing his thing. It's, you know, he's wilding. I mean, at this point, I think we kind of understand his his whole thing. Maybe we were unused to it. You know, he was gone. He was away for so long. Mm-hmm. But his his whole persona is just wild out. Live life to the fullest. Every day is a party. You know, he's you know he's throwing money in the in the club like he's a a, a baseball pitcher. Man, this shit is beautiful, man. Yeah, dude, he's trying to he get the pitch. people back into that vibe. That 2014, you know, what I'm saying Bobby Bobby Schmurter was just a wild young nigga, man. Now he's a growner man. He, he's a he's a grown man. 27 years old and uh, living his life in the club, throwing money, throwing it like a baseball, all that type of shit, and just uh, yeah. trying to show you, man, this is how you live life, man. You got to have fun with it every minute of it, as far as the social media aspect goes, as far as we can see. So, yeah, he's looking like he's having a lot of, uh, he's, he's having a great time with, uh, with all the money he's gotten. I mostly respect the fact that he was inside of the studio with the women, man. That was cool. It's a cool look. Good look for Bobby Shmurda. Salute to Bobby Shmurda. Speaking of looks, uh, what do you think it would look like if Colin Kaepernick went back to the NFL right now? I think Colin Kaepernick, um, off of the workout videos I've seen of him, he looks ready, man. He looks uh, looks fit. He looks... um. 
Like he can go on the field right now, hundred percent, no fatigue, and uh, you know, be ready to learn offense. I think the the, the NFL owners should give him a chance at least. After to, he took a knee and stated that the NFL is like slavery. Yeah, man. I mean, shit. Okay. Yeah. It's, the it, knee. The knee was to call representation to a cause. And for some reason, then you got a paid a settlement for the cause. And now, Colin Kaepernick urges NFL teams to work him out. My talent will speak for itself. Hey, man, you going you gonna to hate on the man that loves to play the game of football? I mean, there are other routes to, that he can go. He can play for the Rocks League and shit. But the who? He, the Rock. The way in the Rock Johnson, you got the XFL. I think it's the Extreme Football League. No, I don't know what I don't know what the X is, but yeah. You know nobody going out to play for no fucking XFL dog. Hey man, look at Johnny Manziel. You know what I'm saying? Johnny Bucks. You feel me? He, I think he was in there. I think he who, was a part who, of that league, calls, or it was maybe calls, it was a Canadian league. Who calls Johnny Manziel Johnny Bucks? <laughs> in 2022 No one man okay. But You know Johnny mm-hmm. Manziel Was that guy At one point You it know was. what I'm saying And Colin Kaepernick Is still that guy man He's He's young He's a uh, He's tall So basically You want to train To get back on the plantation I mean if that it, Does he Okay I mean Maybe his views Have changed Nigga does not think it's a Nigga, you put out an entire Netflix fucking documentary where you explained how the, or you made some great claim that went out, and I have not seen the documentary because I don't support Colin Kaepernick anymore because you went out here, and since you, you made your big statement, you've basically made it in every other action to just state, no, I'm ready for football. 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 We're getting back to football. He, uh, I mean, I mean, this has what, been since 2015 now. What do you want to say? Or to six, him? Not, not Nigel. It's well, been nearly. I mean, we, we literally coming up on like almost a decade since dude did this shit. Dude, I'm just saying you can't. It's hard to hate on a hate on a man that is just trying to strive for the love of the game. He has the love for the game. For the the, game. I, there's so many. There's other like. But how do you love a game that's sports? like slavery? Or maybe it's the NFL. But why would you want to play for the NFL? Yeah, see, that, that, like that is okay. That is strange. He could play in a different league. What he has to do is break his silence and and just stay in a, in, a, in a full-fledged talk where somebody gets to just fully ask him questions, no cuts, no bullshit, just get to the shits. What the fuck were you thinking? And was this all a scam? Because honestly, at this point, when we look at the Black Lives Matter people who reportedly took a lot of the donations and the head of the quote unquote Black Lives Matter organization that stepped in front of the Black Lives Matter movement. But these were just people that I don't know if they were associated with George Floyd or what, but they made an organization, made it the name Black Lives Matter. So literally by default, they were the people who many people just saw to support when it came to that issue but the point I'm trying to make is you got that you got Colin Kaepernick having this whatever X million I think it was uh, it was some ridiculous over tens of millions of dollars but I could be very wrong or maybe it was a $500,000 settlement I really don't remember how much the settlement was in fact actually that's quite important um, as I roll this joint I need to look up how much that settlement was but you get your settlement and now we come back and seeing you do this, man. It, it, you know, it's just fake. All right. I don't support Colin Kaepernick anymore. I supported him. You know, he's, you know, he didn't say it, but basically we should stop supporting the NFL if the NFL doesn't want to help shed light to these issues, even though they did quote unquote after the George Floyd incidents and whatnot end up doing such a thing. I mean, they, they now, now all the sports want to let you know about the black people that work for them and ha ha ha. And, I mean, I, I'm, I mean, like, what else can they do? I don't know what else they can do, honestly, except for donate the money, except and put the money into these communities. But I can't, I can't take out a tax sheet and tell you how much they've done of that. The point I'm trying to make to you is, is how much are you trying to make sure of that, Colin Kaepernick? 
How much are you trying to make sure the 49ers are paying their fair share and getting the communities around San Francisco cleaned up? Well, he can't make sure of that unless he's in the organization. Aha. Right. Aha. You got you to gotta use your head. You know what I mean? This is how Colin Kaepernick gets into the NFL and then spreads his philosophy, his thoughts in the, into the players. And then now the, you players, now the players rebel and they make their own league. Our own league. No. You asshole. And I, you being disingenuous. Our own league. Bring the best players. Be like, yo, let's band together and make our own shit. You know what I mean? We millionaires. So this is the. Let's do it. This is the. uh, uh, Let's do it. What was the players? What was niggas in Game of Thrones? You know what I'm saying? It was the Unsullied. And then you had Grey Wolf or whatever that nigga's name was. And then this nigga literally had to go into the fucking the Egyptian. Uh, slave holding of all the other unsullied this man said ah, Daenerys Targaryen dragon mother come fight and then you, you think Colin Kaepernick is the blonde, is, is the is, is Grey Wolf the unsullied uh yes who uh, not all of them is unsullied <laughs> yeah man he's gonna he's gonna liberate he's gonna liberate all the all the NFL players man he's gonna get them to make their own shit but first, he has to get back into the into the organization. So you gotta use your head, man. You gotta think ahead of time. This is why the, the, he 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 has made a whole plan in my in my head that he's you know what I'm saying in my head. Colin Kaepernick has planned all this out. You know what I'm saying this is all pulling. It could be. It could be. He's he's the the the, the runaway slave who's trying to recruit all the other men to the better movement. I, I I think it, it is I, I, totally unlikely. It is not what's happening. Colin Kaepernick simply just either ran out of the money that he got from that settlement, or just knows that he's gonna run out and that that doesn't stay forever. And you also just can't make a bag forever. At least not the same bag that you would off of just playing a fucking game. I mean, not to not to like minimize the injuries, the grind, and the work. But at the end of the day, when you really reduce it back. And you state all that grind and work is just to put points on a board. And if we can actually do enough of that, we don't even necessarily have to be the Super Bowl winning championship team. But at least me, if I can aid in doing enough of that points on the board scoring, I can have millions for many years, especially if I can do so in as safe as way a pos- as, as safe a way as possible and extend my career. So it, it kind of just looks to me like you're noticing how big the bag is on the other side. You jumped over to the other side. The grass wasn't so green. And uh, now you went back on the other side where the grass seems greener. And, and you know, that happens, man. Sometimes you make decisions like that in life. But like the Instagram commenter here says on this academic story, posting Colin Kaepernick's alleged uh, reported uh, thoughts. You know, he says, uh, this Instagram comment, he says, make up your mind, gang. And I agree, man. Like, goddamn, Nick. Like, go do your TED Talk shit, man. Go go out here and be, you know what I'm saying? Super Colin Kaepernick, the uh the freedom fighter. Like, why you gotta be in the NFL, but then also say you, I, I just think it's um also just dishonorable. Like, for all the guys who it, it okay, it, it is disingenuous for sure. He's kind of like flip flop on his morals. But wait, if, if boy, that's boy. what if that's what he said, so okay. But, that, in but the he didn't say much. That's the thing. In the doc, in the doc, it, isn't it a, a, like a like a doc film kind of about his life? Did you watch it? I did not watch it. Me neither. It's, but I believe it's like a doc film about his like early life and how he grew up and how like he faced racism coming up being like a half white half black kid and stuff. Then how like does that. the how does the tagline? even come out where Colin Kaepernick does not state the contrary or at least he doesn't loudly state it on a tweet because that would go viral uh, he doesn't state no I didn't say that the slave that the NFL is like slavery I mean all of what you just said matters in Colin Kaepernick's story but it doesn't matter in this story where we're talking about did you say that this is like slavery and that's that's the news that came out that's what everybody took from the whole documentary that you made I mean people I didn't watch it 
Like I, I didn't, I didn't know it for being having a moment in there where they showed. Nah, it just literally was just they talked about some quote that they heard in the movie, and so or in the documentary or whatever it was. And so my thing is like, if you don't come out to to correct that, and you just let that be what it is, you you really can't come back to the NFL unless you want to look like a clown, like just just totally just shitting on all the stuff that you really didn't talk much about. That's the thing. That was the thing that we always criticize Colin for. You just not talking. You say something. Like, you got to actually, I mean, you hear on this little podium here and there, got your afro, but can you fucking say something? Like, can you be on Twitter? Can you be talking? Like, you don't know how to be every day, but at least just let us know how you feel. And I think a part of letting, not letting us know how, to, how he feels is, yes, Najee, you're right. He does have a plan, but this plan, honestly, was just to suck dry as much as he could out of a movement. And I think he did it. And now he's done. And honestly, it's it's very sad, man. It's not that what he was talking about was was fake, but is that as we've seen in other instances like the BLM movement, where you have an organization created, and then the lady is literally out here buying multi million dollar homes all across the country off of donations from Black Lives Matter donors. You, you just look at it and go, damn it, man. It's a it's a, and like I said, this about a different situation, but it's a real business in killing niggas. It's a real business and not only killing niggas, but that you want to stand in front and say you, you, you against the killing of niggas. God damn it, it's a real business in that too. The death of niggas. There's a real business in the death of niggas. The damn shame. If you ask me. It's a fucking shame. Uh, terrible business to be in, man. And uh, Colin Kaepernick did play both sides of it. And... Uh, I agree with that Instagram comment. Take your side, gang. Very simple. Very uh, well said. That, uh, Colin Kaepernick, man. But I, but in pure talent, though, real quick, yeah, I think he can get in the league. <laughs> you know what I mean? You get no dap from me on that one. Uh, you get no dap from me on that uh, one. I, I, I'm not going to dap you up on the. Uh, God, God could play. Like he's still good though. Like damn, nigga. Like we, it was about the cause, man. Nah, I'm not nah. rocking with you for trying to go get another bag from the NFL <laughs> after all that. Like it was no. a shitty joke. It was a shitty joke. Shitty yeah, joke. I know it was. Well, I'm not really. I'm just on the con. Like damn, it's just really disappointing. Speaking of disappointing, these gas prices are crazy, especially out here in California. So uh, anybody out there on on them on them roads of Cali, if you're listening to this on the freeway, salute to you. You you a road hustler, you you a real, you know, you getting it out the mud, as the as the mud is getting thicker. So hey man, salute to you. Yeah man, these gas prices are getting outrageous. I ain't even gonna lie, man. You know I saw gas prices up to seven dollars for the. For the unleaded gas, man. You know what I'm saying? That shit is no joke. But uh, we're seeing good signs, hopefully, coming up in this uh, legislation for California, man. You know what I'm saying? They're, 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 they're having talks about us getting a debit card or some sort, some sort of payment so we can, you know, pay for our gas, man, and don't got to worry about paying it out of pocket. Hmm. What you need to know about Getting Ga- Newsom's four hundred dollar gas rebate for California drivers, which, like my brother said, is apparently, let's get to the meat of it. Newsom's plan: four hundred dollars to Californians for each vehicle registered in their name. The current plan would allocate the money through a debit card to all vehicle registrants, including motorcycle and electric vehicle owners, regardless of income, as early as this summer. Payments would be capped at $800 for anyone with more than one vehicle registered under their name, though households with multiple vehicles registered to different family members could receive far more than that amount. Californians who don't own a registered vehicle would not receive a fund, although $750 million in grants would go to transit and rail agencies to offer free or substantially (coughs) reduced fare. Newsom's proposal is expected to cost the the most of several proposals introduced in the state legislature. His eleven billion plan his eleven billion dollar plan 
includes $9 billion in tax refunds to drivers, $750 million for public transit grants, $600 million to pause the sales tax on diesel for one year, and $523 million to pause inflation increase to gas and diesel excise. So he's trying to stop the inflation. Oh, hey, man, that's a good thing, hopefully. And then there's this thing about the $9 billion in tax refunds to drivers. Uh, I guess this is a portion or this is the yeah, I guess this is the nine billion dollars in tax refunds. This is it. So, OK. The governor's plan would be subject to approval by the state legislature and could set him up for a battle with leaders of the Senate and Assembly who introduced their own proposal last week to provide financial relief from the increasing cost of all goods with more money for families. The lawmakers plan centers on two hundred dollars of rebates for each taxpayer and dependent and excludes the top 10% of earners in the state. Their proposal gives money to eligible Californians whether or not they own a vehicle. So you could either get $400 if you own a car or $200 if you are just in California. Just 200 bucks. Would you bloody people just instate this universal basic income and just say that Andrew Yang was right? We're not fucking up the economy. We're not we're not we're not gonna drive the inflation up immediately to a point where people won't be able to pay things. The inflation will go up, but people will have more money. And with more money they'll have also more options. More options. Options, as in maybe I don't even have to work that many hours and I will actually suffer then going through work on the bus or on the on the whatever because I'll put in the hours that I do have to put in on one day or two days and enjoy the money and enjoy my time maybe the maybe an, uh, an extra day of the week or an extra two days of the week but nah brother <clears throat> we gotta work you know what I'm saying you gotta, you gotta make those big bucks man for those for, those, for all these corporations got to so they, you know the, the corporations lose their their uh, their the people are going to be spending money at the corporations and the people that want to stay for even more money on top of the thousand that they're comfortable with well would that not just push the people who want to push for even more up like it would it would it would it would it would incentivize them to to do even more it's like you already <clears throat> basically get to live you get to pay your bills now you get to not only find a job but hey man maybe i could look for a job that suits my happiness and I could do that a lot more comfortably if, hey, my bills were, you know, at least alleviated in the time that I'm looking for the job. It just seems to me like it's a. It sounds like a good idea, but no, nah, man, it's not. It, that's 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 most definitely not going to happen because Unless, of um, capitalism. People love. I mean, people love to have their workers. You know what I'm saying? I don't think the universal basic income is going to lead to a. Um, to a slowage or stoppage of work I actually think the opposite I think more people will want to go out to work the jobs that are out there and but you got to think about people that well, the are just that starting would, in the workforce the people that will be opposed to you like saying this will be like yo this is just going to make America lazy for not right you know it's going to they're probably going to give you the talking points of Something like there our American citizens are not going to want to go to the military, something like that. Like, why would they even have any incentive doing that? Because America has provided you money that allows you when you were on the poverty line, when you were on the poverty. See, many people may not see it this way because <sighs> you know, actually, you're making a good point. This is exactly what happened to the black community. And I don't want to get too deep here. But in the 1960s, initiatives were passed so that the welfare state was either created or it was in, in general just beefed up. And now you could have, as a single mother, checks from the government come to you in the form of food stamps. And you could have you know, affordable housing and you could have several different things allotted to you if your case was that you needed it and many of the cases that 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 qualified for this were the single motherhood ships they, they, these these cases or people that were destitute enough to qualify 
So even if you were married and if you were poor enough. But the point is, is people mostly that this qualified for were people that were single mothers. And this, what we saw in the black community, while other communities were taking this money and either using it to just get out of hard times so that they could, you know, find their footing and, and, and get off of the assistance of the government we saw in the black community, particularly women, take more on to the ideals of, well, if the government has me, who else do I need to depend on? Which really is nobody in the moment. So actually, <clears throat> let's actually abandon our men in that, well, we, we can have more of an attitude that we don't need them. The, the attitude that, that people need each other is kind of no when you have these amenities of the walled garden. It, it's like, why would I even need to like tend this with you when I got all my own problems on my own? I believe that is one of the main contributing factors to the attitude that many black women often, not many, not all, not, not most, I mean, not all, but many, have towards black men. I mean, I've experienced it myself. It's not like my anecdotal experience speaks for all black men, but as a, particularly as not a quote unquote tough black guy, especially as not a young tough black guy, um, you know, in my earlier days, we, you know, I've talked about this on the pod, but we definitely, Nigel and I experienced bullying by the hands of black women. When you had older, you know, Latina girls, Asian girls, Indian girls, I mean, if you ever saw them, if anything, they just ignored you. I mean, they just acted like, hey, we're the senior, you're the freshman. If we did make fun of you, it was kind of just on some, some basis of that, like you're younger and you're cute and you're small and you're this or you're that. But for these girls, they just made fun of us just for our appearance. And so what I'm just trying to say to you is, is and not only that, I mean, I've, it, it's, it, you know, it's really just two parties of women for me that I find a high frequency of uh, just like sort of, and this is not all of these women. This is not even most of these women. This is just many, a good portion of some, but it, it's, uh, you know, you'll, you, these infractions of like, sort of like, like it, it'll be dykes, man. Salute to the dykes out there, but a lot of dykes, you know, they don't really like fucking with some dudes. Like they'll 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 treat you like, I don't know, like I'm linked to something in their past almost. And it's very I've actually experienced this since I was a child, literally. I mean, I I do believe that just because of my masculine presentation and then my already as a child, my masculine, I was I was a small boy, but I was a fat boy, and my voice was was more prominent than I think a lot of other small children. And uh, I could get off for sounding like a teenager or even like a man in some instances when I was a boy. So it's like, yeah, I just, I, I just, I've just experienced these weird things of like, wait, why did you even think that I said something disrespectful about you? Like, what did I do? Like, it, it, just instances that came, that started off with the, like, I'll tell you, Remember that you remember this. Nigel, Nigel will remember exactly what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about this, but we were once at Universal Studios, and I was in a line, and I'm just standing around. I'm just like we're just waiting, and I see a bunch of trash can, bunch of trash cans, like a bunch, like everywhere. My little brain's not processing the fact that these people need to keep this place clean. The fact that, you know, what you're walking into is supposed to be a walled garden within the walled garden of America. This is supposed to be. Uh, like a movie set not even like a movie set everywhere which is supposed to be clean polished pristine unless there's purposeful trash anyway my my little brain wasn't collecting all of that and I was just seeing a bunch of trash cans and I said damn there's a bunch of them all over the place I said it out loud I was just thinking out loud and then this woman was standing in front of me she turns around and she's like what like she's she's just like offended She's like, wait, what, what? She can tell, like, I can tell that she's like looking over just to see basically if there was any other, if there were any mean glances or if there was any vibe of disrespect. She found none and she turned back around. And I always just remember that moment of like, why did this lady kind of like turn around looking for an issue? I don't remember exactly what she said, but she definitely looked like turned around quickly, like as if somebody had said something to offend her. And then when I thought about it, you know, she was a masculine presenting woman. She was with a woman. And uh, I believe she thought I was talking about there was too many dykes. Like there's too many. And this was the 2000s. This was a time where you could get called slurs and whatnot, even as a woman. And 
you 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 will be made fun of by people. People just made fun of people. Like that's a thing. Like people just did it. Um, like not necessarily in your face, but they gossiped and they talk and they you know. But it just showed me like wow, some people do literally just have this automatic. It's like your voice plus what you say, and they can just take it away. So um, I don't even know how I got down this trope, man. I don't even know how I got down that story. Yeah, that was, was kind of high. Yeah, that was, that was a long little tangent, but I mean, the point is, is that you gotta you gotta definitely watch what you say around certain people, man. You gotta definitely uh, be aware of your surroundings. Right. Oh okay, okay. I th- I think just to just to end off this this like this show, we we gotta talk about the One Piece. Yeah, chapter ten forty four, which is not out yet, so it'd be literally spoilers for anybody watching this. Um, I mean, yeah, spoilers. Spoiler alert: We're talking about a chapter that is not out yet. It's not out yet, but we both read the leaks. It, it, it's out, but not, you know what I'm saying? It's not out through the official channels, so it's a leak. Yeah, but it's out in Japan. Right. It's out. True. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, so, yeah, yeah there's yeah, always a loophole yes. there, man. But, uh, yeah, the, the latest chapter is is a good one. It's a spectacular one. There's a lot of, rev- like, we get revealed a lot of things in this chapter uh, I think what we first see in the chapter is basically Luffy is now awake and we now know that this man is in like a different form or something like that he's 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 happy he's giddy you know what I'm saying he's having the time of his life and it seems like all his energy is back and he's uh ready to to spring into action and a lot of hockey, and a lot of hockey is surrounding is surrounding the area. Like a lot of just conquerors hockey is just beaming everywhere. It's just, it's just massive power. And then we get we get another we get another page. We get to the next page, and we just see everyone just looking up at the roof, just astonished, kind of just like dazed, like what well, what Luffy, like what what's going on up there, like what's going up on up on the roof. We basically get a cut of everyone in Oganigashima. Uh, Law, Kid, Sanji, Marco, Nami, uh, Kaido. We, we we get everyone's pretty much reaction to what's going on on the top of the roof. And we actually finally get an explanation of what Luffy's Del Fruit is also from the Gorosei. Or the Five Elders, if you easily say. It was very... It was very it was very detailed and information. Like it was an information based uh, chapter. Not even really fighting or nothing like that. Just information. And the, uh, I don't know, the spiciness of it, man. The the way the story could just captivate you and just keep you there. It's beautiful. Cause the just the surprise of Luffy's fruit, and of him being a not even a paramecia. Now it's a. It's a zone, mythical zone. This is crazy. Well, what do you think? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No thoughts. I don't know. Oh, well, I'll say. I mean, one hell of a chapter. Luffy is a uh, is goaded status, just like the rest of the crew, or not the rest of the crew, but the three main, is as in Zoro and Sanji, they all have their like power capped, their peaks, as I should say. And uh, from here on out, the story is going to be, just all just straight, powerhouse action, and uh, I'm I'm very excited for it. And then, and as shout out to Tech King, another uh, YouTuber, he is he said that the final battle is going to be next week. So hopefully that 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 is true. I have high hopes for this next chapter.
Anthony for you, brother. Dead air. Uh, and then I really got, I really got nothing else. Uh, I mean, I got, I got sports shit. I mean, I could speak about. <sighs> I can speak about. I can speak about the NBA right now, but it's close to the playoff time. We got four about four teams right now chasing a, a specific spot in the conferences in the Western Conference, and uh, the race is looking a little tight because we only got nine more games left in the season. My team Portland is out of it. They're pretty shit. They're they're twelfth place right now. They're not going to be in the playing. Nothing. They're not going to they're not going to make anything. So I'm not even focused on that team anymore. I'm actually going for the Clippers in the West. They're their eighth right now. They got to play in the play-in. So if they lose two games in the play-in, then, then they don't even make it to the playoffs. So I'm having high hopes that they can make that ace, get that AC, and then just kind of push forward, be a little dark horse team. So, yeah, that, that, that's that's my thoughts right there. Really, don't really have anything else. You got anything? Yeah. Yeah. You, you good? You, you done? You don't want to talk no more? No, I'm good. Yeah. Nah, it's just uh. You know, I, I I just uh you know I would I would take that conversation a little bit with the one piece. I went a little 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 nerd brain on that one. I kinda just kept on talking. No, you're good about that. I just kinda totally forgot what I was talking about. And I, I was talking about something. I was trying to bring up the uh, the story about being in line and talking about the dykes and the women. There was something I was trying to talk about, but like I don't know. I just forgot. But like, I was talking to you, so I, I just kind of yeah, just felt like all right. Just, I just don't want to really talk when I'm just talking kind of just like I, I kind of I would like you to to like you like just oh like you have to notice that like okay when we're in a topic like if I just go off on a tangent for something I'm trying to relate it to something 90 times out of 100 it, even not me anybody so if it was to relate it to something it is incumbent on you to remember the base conversation so that then you can whatever you say whatever I say then you can pitch it back but like I just it just goes off on a weird tone when it's just like I go off on a tangent hey one piece like it just feels uncomfortable and I just wanted you to feel that same uncomfort that's why I didn't say anything because it's like it's very uncomfortable like I was saying something and I knew I was saying something I just didn't have it but now you just want to go to the next thing and I know we just are trying to get through these topics and I know it's nerve-wracking I know it's a lot but I'm just saying just like uh, yeah just consider more the Oh, the, uh, each topic and just consider it more before you you, you just like kind of just throw it away to the side because like oh uh, my my fault I thought th- I thought it said you got to be more aware of people uh you got to be more aware of the people you got to be more aware of what you talk about when you're around people yeah but I was telling the story not for the story we were talking about something else I brought that story up like that's the moral of the story but I'm just like. I'm saying more so like just keep more an eye of the top the underlying topic in the tangents we bring up because it was a tangent off of a main line so like I wanted to keep that main line but sometimes I'll lose it in my tangent because I'll just go off 
But it, it, mm, but okay. if there was somebody in the chat, I would have said, "What was I talking about?" Then they would have said, "Yo, you were talking about this." Then I would have said, "Wait, wait, wait, no, this is what I'm talking about." I bring that up to say I'm I'm trying to finish what I'm trying to say, but the tangent was like A B, and I didn't get to C, and it's a very just like, it just doesn't it it, it feels very uncomfortable. Yeah, it feels very uncomfortable to just switch into other topics when I haven't said what I want to say. Like it's not. Like it just let's not treat this as like a um we like like we gotta get I know to the, the one piece is uh, yeah like like yeah like and it is that but you just have to have the gauge of when it's when done. we're actually talking about something and I I think what I did wrong there is that I didn't bring you back into the main focus of what you were talking about that's what I'm saying yeah because I, okay I could definitely see that that okay I could definitely see how that can like make things awkward off the conversation just i i tell you the moral of the story and then we get i jump into one piece instead of like seeing that like bounce off of wait i gotta i gotta get him back in track of what yeah the main line was yeah no no i i understand what you're saying i i apologize that that's actually very rude it's all right but you know we're learning how to podcast while we do it and uh yeah man i just like especially the one piece conversation the other thing i'll say about that too is because it is so heady like you got to like uh just like how these other conversations have the like hey man speaking of shy to people or whatever like we get into it, it you know you should treat each topic conversation as this is like i don't know i'm griping about this even on the pod i really shouldn't do this but like just transition it like don't like you got to be smooth with it cuz dude serious i mean at least to the listener, maybe this is nothing, but like to like in talking, it's like it's just an abrupt. Because one piece is a lot. Like it's it's a big. Con- that's why every time we we start the conversation, I don't want to get into it. So like you gotta kind of like at least give me a little little you know like the little shoe slip thing how you put your shoe on but then the shoe's tight and it's all like uncomfortable but then you put the little slip and then you could like slip your your foot in better. They don't really put these out no more, but my dad used to have one of those. It's like a plastic thing. And then you kind of just put your foot in and then like, yeah, it just helps you put your shoe on. Like, that's what transitions are. And sometimes the shoe's too tight and it just kind of just, it just makes it hard to talk. Like you just, uh, hey, you about that? Like, it's just, and you didn't do it like that, but it's like, it, it feels like that. Like, it's just like, ah, uh, like, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. Like, you know, because number one, it's a chapter that's out, not out. And then it's like, there's a lot that happened in it. It's a hell of spoilers. And so it's just. Yeah, just approach it with some more, uh, just a little bit more grace. Like, yeah. But yeah, yeah that's some good, podcast one on one. That's good advice to 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 give. Thank you, because I I didn't even realize that I was like um how I just kind of abruptly just kind of ended like abrupt abruptly ended that other topic and just went into another one, right? Mm-hmm. Like. I was just so focused on like, okay, get get to the next topic. So yeah, I, I think I got a little too. Uh, and I accept your apology, man. I appreciate it, man. We're grown, man. I don't want to shit on you or nothing. It's not for that. It's just about, yeah. No, no. It's just, honestly, it's not about that. It's really about growth and like you know, learning as you go, and uh, trying to figure out as you go. And uh, you know, I appreciate your I appreciate your advice actually because it it helps me in order to make a more smoother conversation and smoother transitions into different things we want to talk about. Speaking of different things you want to talk about, so you brought up your your trailblazers. They still suck. The trailblazers suck. They're losing. One Piece is cooking up. The new chapter's coming out in like two days. We really should properly talk about it after it's out. I I really don't think that will be right. That's just, it's out, but it's, but you know, it's like, but then again, if this was clips, we could just put 1044 spoilers. It's really nothing. But, yeah, man, I'm kind of just talked out, honestly. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm tapped out for the day. You know, it's a, it's a little late. And it's it's like, you know, it's time for my, it's time for me to get my sleep, my REM sleep. There you go, man. Little podcast one on one, little powwow with the twins. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Rambling Rogue Show. 
And uh, maybe we can get a little vibes in here before we exit. Just a little, just a little love, a little something. Damn, that's a little embarrassing that that's not up. Okay, you know, I had a video to play, a funny video, but fuck it. I don't even want to recalibrate this shit. Yeah, I'm lazy a little bit. I'm trying to fight it. What do you want to fight about it? Nah, man, I'll, we can hug about it. And then figure it out. That's kind of pussy. No, <laughs> I'm with it, man. Whatever, Whatever man. We out of here. That's all we got. Exiting with some ecstasy. It's the Rambling Rogue Show, you know, and W and Jars Rogue. Two B's, two Y's. You know what I mean? Don't forget it, guys. And yes, I made sure it rhymed. Because I'm going to drop a fat time. They like me all the time. I go hard on the beat So I can see her feet Cause I keep it real neat And you can call me Joss Bree There you go With a little bit under my teeth Uh huh I got gold in my teeth Diamonds in the molars Speak Shawty up. know me She knows she was uh, Shit I fucked it up uh, I had a little flow I had a little flow